Now, uh, you, I want to talk about the materials that you use, right? Uh, you try, you say, sure. you try not to use the traditional rosewood, mahogany, maple, and you like experimenting with, uh, you know, Indian hardwoods. And uh, yes. so, one thing is the use of wood has remained constant since the birth of the guitar. Do you think this will uh-huh. ever change? Is that an ev- evolution that we can expect to see sometime? Do you know of people using alternative materials? And yeah. I do know of people using alternative materials. I've tried several instruments that have been made with, you know, bodies of carbon fiber, for example, acoustic guitars right. made of carbon fiber. I've uh, played acoustic guitars made with hemp wood, with uh, uh, various other composite materials. Right. And frankly, I think wood is one of those things that gives the acoustic guitar a tone that is not is that it's almost impossible to replicate using any composite. Right. Right. Uh, having said that, I don't think to an extent, okay, uh, I'm generalizing here, but the species of wood is not as critical to making a great sounding guitar. Okay. Yeah. As it is, um, as it is when compared with a composite, right? right? There's a world of difference between a wooden acoustic and a composite bodied acoustic, they will just okay. sound like, the, for example, a carbon fiber guitar, I played several of them. To my ears, they just sound really tinny and harsh. They don't right. sound, they don't have that mellow sound that wood brings that to warmth. it. That warmth, right. Right. Yes. So okay. There's a warmth to it. There's a responsiveness, which I've, I'm still yet to hear. Maybe there are okay. some around the world. I'm not saying that there aren't. Okay. I haven't seen them Got or it. I haven't come across them yet. Within the wood species, yes, some will be marginally better than the others. Right. Uh, by and large, if you know what you're doing with a piece of wood, you can work with a number of species which are not your standard Indian rosewood or mahogany or maple and make something that is fabulous sounding. Right. The tough part, the tough part in this market segment, okay. in the high end market segment, uh, the challenge is convincing clients because okay. what happens is when people have been collecting guitars for 20 years or playing right. guitars for 40 years or whatever it is, they have a very a uh, fixed frame of reference for comparing what they are used to, right? Okay. So if you come up there and say, oh, I've got some beautiful eucalyptus, would you like me to use that as the back right. and sides? I know that it will sound fabulous because I've built with it. Okay. Or someone who's sitting in the US who has never seen eucalyptus or played right. with it, they're going to be like, oh, no, can you just give me, you know, Indian rosewood or Brazilian rosewood or whatever it is because right. I know what those instruments sound like. So it's a safer bet, right? right? So that challenge sometimes, not sometimes, it's fairly often that challenge pops up. Right. And that's one of the things that going to shows helps with. So okay. when I'm at shows, I try consciously to take guitars which are made with non-traditional species, at least one. If I'm carrying two right. guitars, I'll make sure that at least one is completely out of the box. Right. So right. that folks get a chance to hear it and be like, all right, you know, this really sounds cool. And I never thought that this particular species could make an instrument that is worth playing. But there you go. Right. Right. So that's that's how it works. I mean, it's it's tough in India. It's easier to convince people um, okay. because I think they are they are more open to what I have to offer. Once they visit the workshop, they get to meet right. me in person. We have a detailed chat. When you're talking to people online or via email, it's not as easy. Right. So I offer both options. It's not that I don't make guitars with rosewood and uh, mahogany. I do. It's just sure. that I'll always try and first get people to experiment. Right. And if if I find that they're absolutely against it, then the regular options are always there. We're not they're not going anywhere. All right. And if budget, time constraints, or sourcing wasn't an issue, what's the perfect guitar that you'd build? In terms of materials, in terms of the in wood, in terms of anything, in terms of anything, <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm still, uh, I'm still learning, and I, okay. I think I'm, I think I'm going to, going to be for the rest of my career doing this. It's just I get excited every single time I string up an instrument. Right. So I built, you know, to date I've built maybe about seventy-five acoustic guitars, and I'm still just as excited when I put the strings on on the final stages as I was with the first one. It's it's this sense of wonder that, my God, I've actually put this damn thing together and it's, right. uh, it's actually musical and it's actually beautiful to look at and it's actually playable, all of them together. I would, you know, give a 
I'm a sucker for uh, non-regular woods, like I mentioned. Right. So I have a soft spot for purple heart, which is a wood that comes from South America, and okay. it's just naturally purple in color. Wow, uh, that's that's just what it is. I really like that. Uh, I think it's a, it's a lovely sounding wood. It's a lovely looking wood right. for the back and sides. Um, paired with a nice spruce top, that would probably be something that I would make for myself. Okay. And I did once, and then uh, right. two days after it was built, somebody walked in and bought it. Oh. So I haven't got around to repeating the process, but I will right. as and when I get time now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, uh, you, you make everything from acoustic steel string guitars to electrics and even mandolins, right? Uh, but your focus is really steel string guitars finger style, uh, for finger style artists. Now, how did you arrive at that forte, right? How did you decide that was your thing? And how does the complexity of building that differ from the complexity of, say, building an electric guitar? Okay. So, yes, I build a wide variety of instruments. Uh, minus the mandolin, that was a one-off thing for a friend of mine. I don't okay. build mandolins. Okay. Uh, just simply because my workshop is not equipped for each instrument that I make. There's a right. several, there are several fixtures and things that I need, and I'm not getting into mandolins. It's a whole different world. Um, but having said that's out of the way now. Um, I think in terms of complexity, I find personally that building an electric guitar is a whole lot easier. Okay. I think it doesn't take, A, it doesn't take as much time. B, uh, I have more freedom in terms of the kind of wood that I'm working with, the kind of shapes that I'm working right. with. There's, there's a lot more leeway um, in terms of designing. Block? It's because it's a solid block. As long as, you know, it's a, it's a fairly good quality tone wood, it's right. well dried and it's aesthetically appealing, the options are endless as far right. as electric guitars go. Okay. The electronics themselves do the heavy lifting, okay. right? So the challenge is finding a good source for electronics. Uh, we've, we use pickups by a company in the UK called Bare Knuckle, okay. uh, which is pretty popular and they make very, very good quality stuff. And now more recently we've started uh, making pickups in-house. So I've got an electronics whiz who uh, works oh. with me. He handles our repair division. His name is Brigo. So he's now, uh, just as of, I think, two months ago, he's created his own pickup winding machine, and he's been playing around with a lot of prototypes. So this year, we'll be launching our own pickups as well, right. which is great because that gives us the freedom to play around with the actual tone calibration. Okay. Right? So if someone wants a more vintage sound, we can wind it a particular way. You want something for death metal, we can do it. You know, it's not a problem because now we are in control of that process. Right, right. right? So it's interesting. So uh, yeah. So with electric, you're saying the uh, it's more about getting the electronics right as well. Yeah. That's my take on it. Okay. I can. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm opening a can of worms when I say this because there will be enough and more people who will come down very hard sure. on this statement. It's not that the wood is not important, but I think the electronics are more important. God. Let me put it that way. Right. Yeah. I've played I've played electric guitars made of plexiglass, and. Yeah. Uh, so having said that, they don't sound exactly like ones made out of wood, but they're okay. not bad as long right. as they are well, as long as someone has thought through it and equipped them the right way. Right. 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 So for every great instrument, you'll also have 10 which look the same, but sound like crap. Right. Uh, but that, that's the difference between someone who's thought through the entire process. Right. right? The wood is one part of the puzzle and then everything right. else that you assemble, it has to come together. Like you said, so as long as it works. Work. That's the guitar, man. And okay. for from an acoustic, for acoustic guitars, I think the process is a lot more. Uh, it's a lot more detailed. It's a lot more, in my opinion, complicated. Okay. And I think it takes it takes a deeper level of understanding from a craftsmanship standpoint. Okay. Okay. Um, again, I'm generalizing because in the electric really world, good. you know. It's right. more delicate and everything that you do on an acoustic is going to impact the sound of that guitar. Right. Every single step you take on an electric may or may not impact the overall sound. Got it. Got it. Which so is why it. you see electrics in a million different shapes and sizes. Right. It works. You can make it work. On right. an acoustic, you're playing around. If I decide one fine day to expand the width by two inches, it's not just a shape thing. It's going to change the entire dynamic. 
right. because the the volume of air inside that get our body changes and mm. it's going to affect my bass response it's going to affect my treble response and it's going to affect the overall balance of that instrument right okay right so so there's a lot more at stake when you're messing around with the internals of an acoustic fair enough fair enough now yeah, so if you don't know what you're doing you're in trouble yeah <laughs>